Hey guys, it's time once again for another Wrestling Man's Retro Review. This is the place, this is the show, where I review classic Coliseum home videos from the World Wrestling Federation. You know, the great people that are now WWE. Basically, a quick sum up of the show is I give you, the fans, three options to pick for me to review. The one that gets the most votes is the Retro Review for this episode. As I stop the music right there, um, I just, I, I want to tell you, um, this video that, um, I'm going to be reviewing today, as soon as the video got put up on YouTube, mainly YouTube, because I did get a couple pics from, uh, Facebook, but mostly YouTube, this one was just so instant. Um, there was really no other way of picking another video than this one. So, today's retro review is Tag Team Champions. You see on the front cover three teams that have held the WWE Tag Team titles in the past. Now, this is a very interesting videotape. Because this video is almost two hours worth of tag team action. No singles matches, no gimmick, you know, Piper Pit or, you know, whatever. And don't get me wrong, I like Piper's Pit. But this video is just straight up from beginning to end, from beginning to end, all wrestling. Every match on this tape is for the tag team titles. Now... Your host of this videotape is none other than Mean Gene Okerlund. So, why don't I get right down to it. The opening match of this tape is the British Bulldogs against Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine. And Gene Okerlund, boy, he does this so good when he says, even though the titles don't change hands in this match. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, Gene, you're not supposed to tell us how this match ends. You're not supposed to tell us how the match ends. I don't want to know. I want to see it. But, yes, the, the titles do not change, although the Bulldogs do win by disqualification. And that really is the beginning of the setup for WrestleMania 2 with the Bulldogs and the Dream Team. So now we're going to go back excuse me, to 1978. This is where the journey begins. This isn't officially where, you know, the tag team titles are born. It's born a lot later. So we begin after that with the Bulldogs match with a title defense, Toru Tanaka, Professor Toru Tanaka, yes, that same one who'd be in the James Bond movies, and Mr. Fuji, who we will see a lot of, taking on Dino Bravo and Dominic DiNucci, yes, the same Dominic DiNucci who trained Mick Foley, and yes, the same Dino Bravo who dyed his hair blonde. Um, while most of these matches are pretty much clipped matches, it's very interesting to see from 1978 all the way up to 85 when the tape was done, how far wrestling had gone back then. Um, and Dino Bravo and Dominic DiNucci do win become the champs. However, in the next match, and you're going to see this series a lot if you do decide to get this tape is one team wins it and then the next match they show them losing the belts so then we see the Yukon Lumberjacks Eric and Pierre they beat uh, Bravo and Danucci to become the tag champs and then we see them lose to Tony Gurria and Larry Zabisco now I'm gonna be straight up honest with you I've been a fan of wrestling for a long time and you know the Hall of Fame is a big deal Tony Gurria should be in the WWE Hall of Fame, in my opinion, for the fact, besides him being loyal to the company for so many years, he has held the tag team titles on five separate occasions with four different partners. Larry Zabisco, Dean Ho, Haystacks Calhoun, and the other partner who we will see 
or I will mention in a moment, Rick Martel. Now, after Gurria and Zabisco win the titles, we then see a clip of them defending and eventually losing the titles to the Valiant Brothers. But it's not Johnny and Jimmy. It's Johnny and Jerry Valiant who win the tag titles. Jimmy Valiant is in the corner with Captain Lou Albano. Then after that, we see Johnny and Jerry put the gold on the line in Madison Square Garden, losing to two future WWE Hall of Famers in Tito Santana and Ivan Putski. And then we get to one of the most awesome tag teams in WWE history, the Wild Samoans, Afa and Sika. The first half of the 80s, the Samoans owned the tag team division in the WWE, would end up winning the, winning the gold on three separate occasions. This is where they win their first one, beating Santana and Putski. Then they show a match with the Samoans, defending the titles against Gurria and Martel. Now, this is where we see Gurria and Martel probably the most in this tape as far as teams go, or at least one of them. So, Gurria and Martel win the belts, and then their next match, they lose to the Moondogs, Rex and King. And then one of the very few times that they show on this tape, the rematches, so, Gurria and Martel get the rematch, this time against Rex and Spot, replacing King, and Gurria and Martel win the belts. Then, Gurria and Martel defend the titles against Mr. Fuji and Mr. Saito. I reviewed that match in the review of Best at the WWF Volume 2. Check that out. Then, we see Mr. Fuji and Mr. Saito defending the titles in three straight matches against Jay Strongbow and Jewel Strongbow. Now, the first match that they show, they only show the first fall, which is a very quick one. It's basically Fuji throwing salt in the eyes of both men. They pin one of the strong bows, and that's all you see. Then we go to the match at Madison Square Garden where the strong bows face Fuji and Saito, but with Ivan Putski as the guest referee, strong bows win the belts there, and then... One more time, Fuji and Saito against the Strongbows. Strongbows win the belts again. Then the Strongbows have to face once again the Wild Samoans, Afa and Sika, and Afa and Sika would win the belts. Then we get a historic moment on this tape. The Wild Samoans defending the titles against Tony Atlas and Rocky Johnson. Of course, this is the famous match where Captain Lou hits Afa over the chair by accident over the head with a chair, the wooden chair, that leads to Atlas and Johnson winning the belts, thus becoming the first African-American team to win the WWE Tag Team titles. Burning. And then we see Adrian Adonis and Dick Murdoch challenge Atlas and Johnson for the belts, and that review is also on the best of the WWF Volume 2 review. But if you don't feel like watching it, Murdoch and Adonis win the belts. So Murdoch and Adonis hold on to the belts for most of 1984 until they meet a young tag team, Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda, who, if they had stayed in the WWF, could have been one of the all-time great tag teams in history. Now, the last four matches on this tape have Windham and Rotunda on it. So, Windham and Rotunda beat Murdoch and Adonis for the tag titles. Then, after that, is the match at WrestleMania where they defend the titles against Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik, where Volkov and the Sheik win the tag titles. And really, that was one of the better matches of the first WrestleMania. Probably, if, if you had to divide the first half and the second half of that first WrestleMania, this match was perhaps the best of the first half of the show. Then we see the rematch of the tag titles where Wyndham and Rotundo once again become the tag team champions. They beat Sheik and Volkov. And finally, a short clip of Barry Wyndham and Mike Rotundo defending the titles against Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine. Beefcake and Valentine win the titles after Beefcake, from what I could tell, took a cigar and burned the face of Barry Wyndham 
winning the tag team titles. So, what do I think of tag team champions? Now, while, like I said, there are a lot of matches on this tape, and believe me, if I reviewed every one of these matches on this tape, it would take forever for me to do. But, overall, this is actually a good tape. This is a very good historic video to watch of how good the tag team division in the in the WWE used to be especially from night from this period that they showed 1978 to 1985 it would be about one year later 1986 where the peak period of their tag team division would begin from 86 to probably 93 is are the best years of the tag team division in the WWF. But, you know, even though Mean Gene does spoil the beginning of the match, which sucks, I wish they, he didn't do that. It's bad writing, by the way, by the person who is uh, doing this videotape. Bad writing. Um, it's very good. Like, you're not going to get all, you know, all the matches. You're going to get clipped matches, obviously, but that's okay. You know, it, it's really worth it. And I, and I and I wanted to joke this a lot, a lot like every time the title changed, not every time, but a lot of the times, towards the end of the tape, when the titles changed hands, it's like I can't believe it, the titles have changed hands. Next match, I can't believe it, the titles have changed hands. Next match, I can't believe it, the titles have changed hands. You, you get the joke. They don't say it all the time, but they say it. I guess they're trying to get the surprise value. I guess that's what it is. But all in all, this is a very good videotape. I, if you are a pure fan of tag team wrestling, I definitely recommend you getting this tape. Um, it's very good. It's just barely under two hours. Just barely under. But it is definitely worth finding the tape, either on eBay or or on Amazon. Well, that's going to do it for me. Check me out in a couple of weeks for when you can vote for the next edition of Wrestling Man's Retro 